And welcome back. Today we are flying out the Focke Wolf 190A8 at 5.0 with the air spawn. You have four MG 151s in the wing and then the 13 millimeters in the nose. And this is quite a special plane to me because it's actually the first vehicle I've ever taken out in Araby, which has been already over six years ago. And to this day, we are still around sometimes to take out this vehicle and start clicking on people because you don't really have many advantages. You do have a pretty good roll rate. The air spawn sure helps. And you just have overwhelming firepower. So this plane is all about positioning and flying in a very defensive manner. And I don't mean this in the sense of get people on your six and start reversing them. Because if they know where the throttle key is located on the keyboard or even on the controller. They're just going to sit on your six and you can't really do much. So your best bet is going to be diving out using high speed compression in your advantage. Because this thing doesn't lock up all that badly. It is not a Dora. It's probably one of the worst in terms of BR for BR flight performance wise, especially with the Doras at 5.0 now. So, how do you fly this thing? Well, you really just kind of fly around the map and you look for opportune targets. And just like that, in the early stages, I had on someone, I third partied someone and I killed a bomber. And we're already three kills in, which is going to be half of what we are going to get this match. And this is what your average match is going to look like. And I don't mean this in the sense of I get an average of 6 kills per game. Because I don't, you don't, no one does. I mean it in the sense of that the kills that I'm getting here are all pretty mediocre. It's all me helping the team out, me third partying people. And me basically not having to work for the kills other than clicking on them. I hold the trigger down if I get my nose on. And I make sure that people well, stay alive. You are a third party machine and if you get an angle on someone, they are likely just going to be dead. Just like the Spitfire, he goes vertical to loop up and over on one of our teammates. We shoot his wing off, he goes into a flash pin and he is going to be bailing out. And that's kill number four. We run away here, we're going to reset and we're going to see if we can get a little bit of altitude back. Because we are not in the best of positions right here since we are so low, we are vulnerable. And the rest of my team is also very low. So I'm just going to be climbing away from the football right now. Going to get a little bit of altitude back here. And see if some of my teammates, some of the enemies want to dive in. And the second they get below me or even on equal energy state. But don't expect that too much because you don't have much energy to begin with. I'm just going to turn around and point my guns at them again. Just like the Spitfire, he's dogfighting the 190. Donier comes in. He switches targets to the Donier. Reverses himself with the 190 and gets in front of me as well. as 3v1 anyway. Not much he could have done there. And we do the same thing. We just leave. We let them dive on my friendlies and then I come back again. As we are leaving, the Spitfire sees us. He sees us leave. We are in the 190A. He knows this. He has much more energy. So I'm just going to be tap firing my 30 mils to scare him off. That's why I run the tracers in the MGs. So I don't have to waste my 20 mils to scare people. And he's going to try to run an energy trap. But he's a little bit too predictable, a little bit too slow. And we shoot his wing off all the same. And now I'm going to spoil you with a few actual dogfights. And as we wait for this Tempest to dive on us, I'm going to be thanking all my patrons. Thank you all very much for subscribing. It is very much appreciated. And I'm just waiting for this Tempest to start reeling us in. And the second he gets close, I will put my plane into a little bit of a dive to get beyond my actual straight line speed to pick up just a little bit of extra so I can try to reverse this guy. So he's going to pitch up and he's just going to fly straight. And keep in mind, people, just because you're overshot, doesn't mean that I'm not there anymore. So he's going to go vertical. He's going to try and stall me out. Which is the correct thing to do. But he sticks to it just a little bit too long. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to drop my flaps. And then I'm going to be pulling into this direction. And just hold the trigger down. And down goes the Tempest. A few games later we are now engaging a Spitfire. He's kind of low. He's slow. And I'm going fast enough. So I decided to dive on him. It was a very small match. So I could permit myself to do this. I want him out of the match. I don't want to deal with an LF. He's also next to a P47. And the P47 will now, without a doubt, go for me. So I do a real quick check here. See if he's experienced or not. He is level 100. So I want to be a little bit more safe than I would normally in this thing. But keep in mind, just as I've been saying for quite a few videos now. Because I've been playing a lot of map planes. You want to take risks sometime. Because if you don't and you're against a superior plane that also doesn't take a risk. You are just going to end up dying. So we go up here. I'm trying to get inside of a sterling circle by slowing down a little bit. So I go vertical. I drop my flaps. I lose as much speed as possible. That would have ended in a ram if I hadn't actually taken measure to dodge it. But now I have my flaps down. I'm turning a lot better. And we just gun him out of the air. He is an 84. The 84 in general is not that much of an issue. Especially when you go into the modes with 650. 
Do keep in mind that lower speeds this guy actually shits on you in terms of dogfighting. Luckily for us, he's going very slow so you can just loop up and if he tries to follow you, you can instantly gun him out of the air. Very easily, just like that. Here's the 2v1. Yak3P as well as the P51V30 and both these planes vastly outperform me. So I think I dive on them real quick, get two very easy kills in and I miss both of them. Big L right here for me because these planes completely outperform me. So I want to go vertical right now to get out of the D30 because if I go down I get both of them on my 6. So I'm forced to go up. I see the Yak3 coming in. He doesn't really have much energy so it's going to take him a little bit to get close to me. And I'm forced to take this head on. I don't like taking this head on. I'm not sure why the Yak3 took it. But he did and I'm very thankful for that because now I can start dogfighting the D30. And here the real fight starts because he's on our 6. He's going a little bit slower than us making it almost impossible for us to reverse him. And then he breaks off. Pretty ideal. We're going to pitch up after him. He dodges 50 kills yet again. And if he doesn't go vertical and if he doesn't spend too much time trying to build up his energy, we will just win this. We do have better low speed trust and stuff, but our engine is damaged. So instead of trying to play as much energy, I'm going to use my flaps to turn as much as possible. And as I say that, I lose one, which is very unfortunate. I then see that he is going to start pulling into me. I drop my throttle, I lose all my speed. And because of that, he's just going to end up flying right in front of me. If I had missed that, I'd be in a little bit of trouble. But luckily he flew right in my guns, he gets set on fire and he turns into a nice Christmas tree. And here we have it, a Yak-9P that's on the 6 of a P-47N. They've been at high altitude for a little bit now, I told him to dive, he did so. And he's bringing the Yak-9P to a little bit of a close energy state to me as he was. The P-47 dives out, he's going to be leaving the area. And I'm just going to be pitching up after the Yak-9 because the Yak-9 is going a little bit too steep. Now it looks like I'm going to be catching him, of course he is a lot higher than us. I do want to be careful. But if you're going to give me a full profile shot like that, I will gladly take it. Yak 9P goes down and we are going to stall out here and dive back to the deck to see if we can engage anyone else. In this case we have an LA-7 which is something I don't really like to dogfight. And an A6M3 which I like to dogfight even less. So I want to kill one of these first. I don't care which one it is, I just want to get one out of the mess. The LA-7 is faster than us, climbs better than us, turns better than us. The A7M, well it just turns better than us, there's no contest there. But the LA-7, I can win the dogfight if he makes a mistake or if I have an energy advantage. With the A6M, I'm basically forced to just take head-ons, especially if he's accompanied by someone else that can catch me. If the LA-7 pushes me slow into the A6M, it is game over. So I just want to get one of these guys out of the match and I don't really care which one it is going to be. But then another challenger approaches and it's a Yak-3. And the Yak-3 is also something I just do not like fighting in this thing. Especially at a low altitude. So we go head on with the A6M. I'm just going to use my 20 mils without the 13 mils to not scare him away with my tracers. He dodges regardless. So I then pull back in. And this time I just click my left mouse button. Want to get as many guns on target as possible. And he goes down real quick. Friendly P47 trades with the Yak-3. I'm now left alone to 1v1 the LA-7. Which is sketchy. This entire position is. But it's the only chance I'm going to get. So I'm going to take it. I just really hope he doesn't actually hit. <coughs> yeah about that. Yeah, not this time, just kidding. So, he's going for a very, very hard shot here. Throws everything into it. He now stalls below us. And I'm not going to go down instantly. I'm going horizontal for a little bit. I then cut my throttle with my flaps all the way down. And I'm trying to get as much of a position here, much of a shot here as humanly possible. I get it. I crit his wingtip. Take his aileron off, I think. I'm not too sure what I did. But I'm now going to force this downward spiral here. And going to into a downward spiral with a damaged wingtip is not going to be your best idea. I just cut throttle, I stay on this guy 6 and eventually we are going to wear him down. We take his wingtip off, we hit him once more and we just turn him into part of the scenery. I use a Spitfire, we're coming in with about 670 km an hour which is super super fast. Spitfire will not be doing anywhere near that. The problem is that's an LF Mark 9 and the LF Mark 9 is much much better than us. So I'm going to use all the speed I got from that dive to go straight back up. And we're going to do this all day long. Eventually, if he dodges us long enough, we are going to end up lower than him. So I want to make sure that we just push him as low as possible so he can't dive out anymore. And the second he can't dive out anymore, he's probably going to end up going very slow. And it's very hard to start dodging our guns then. So I push on him. I make him turn. I don't commit instantly. I wait a little bit. I then pull back in. And if he takes the wrong approach here, he is going to die. We're almost going to get a shot. We just nick his wingtip. We don't damage him that badly. We're only going 570 now, which is roughly his top speed on the deck. So I do want to be a little bit careful. I don't want to go up too steep, because then his climb rate becomes much more of an advantage to him. 
But at this point he's slow and far enough to the point where I can start going horizontal, bait him into the shot. If he takes it, he dies. And if he breaks over that point, it is too late. He is now stalled in our guns and we just click him out of the air. And here's a game where everything kind of goes wrong, but just right enough to actually salvage it. So this is basically the perfect example of a bad winnable match. Because we are up to it, we are facing a lot of planes we can't really do much against. But we are just going to commit to all these fights. The CW here, I'm actually not too worried about dogfighting it because the CW Spitfire, well, has clipped wings. He's gonna lose a lot of speed, so I just commit one to two turns. If he commits, he is now, he's lost all his energy, just like that. He is completely dry. I pushed him a little bit lower, and I'm not in danger. He's now gonna get third party, and I effectively kill that guy by simply committing to two turns, and we are back at 4.7 kilometers, which is great. Keep looking around, because I do want to make sure that we don't get jumped by someone it is the start of the match. Everyone is still alive. So I want to be a little bit careful. Yak9 dives on him together with a teammate. So I'm just going to be leaving that guy to rot. So I expect him to, to die to those guys very soon here. Another Spitfire comes in. He's a little bit too high. And I hope that's a CW again, the clipped wing. But I'm going to guess it's the LF. Which uh, don't have clipped wing. And it's a premium one. Which mostly means that they are very... Keen on getting one kill and they don't care if they die or not. So I do want to be a little bit careful here. I see that he's going for me. So instead of trying to do what I normally do. Where I let him get a diagonal line. Where they start gaining on me. I don't want this guy to gain on me. I do not want this guy dead on my 6. And I want this guy to go for someone else. Because I really do not feel like dogfighting an LF9. That has an energy advantage on us. So I'm waiting for him to attack us, he doesn't, and I see the Spitfire going low below me, and my thought process is I'm all the way alone on the top. If I stay up here, this LF will eventually go for me, he's probably going to go for the highest one. So I'm going to dive out, I'm going to look like I'm a non-issue to him from here on out. I kill the Spitfire here with relative ease, because he's just way too slow, and we're going 840 kilometers an hour. I'm going to be pulling out of this, I'm going to turn all the speed back into altitude, and for now, I'm probably going to be off the radar of the Spitfire that was just above us. And just as planned, we get all of our altitude back. And the Spitfire that was sitting above us now went for someone else. And just like that, we reversed the energy advantage because he went for the other highest person on the match. He is now busy fighting someone else. We shoot a few rounds at him and we take his wingtip off. And that's going to be pretty huge. He is not going to be crashing, but it at least makes it so that we have a little bit of room here. The highest energy spitfire in the match is now crippled he will not be doing much anymore there's still four of, four of them in front of us however and i know that the spitfire with one wing can still be a danger so i do want to be careful of him but at least he is not going to be as dangerous as he could be so i'm looking for who to engage there's one spitfire all the way behind us there's three in front of us one of which being crippled one of which being very slow so i go for the very slow one we lead him properly but we don't hit him enough and then I want to go for the other one. Unfortunately, the other Spitfire goes head on. We have to dodge that. Well, I can stick it, but I'm not a fan of trading. And we now put all the energy back into a little bit of a climb. And we get away from these two guys. As well as the third one, the pizza delivery guy, all the way in the back. And I'm just going to keep this climb up. I-225 comes in. And I'm going to be turning around. Because the Spitfires are now somewhat occupied. And losing even more energy. If they want to head on me when I'm going 300 kilometers an hour... They are free to do so. They are not going to be winning that kind of fight. So I'll gladly take it. But I still much rather just fight them without them shooting back at me. This guy is going way too slow. We spray a little bit at him. We miss a very easy shot which is unfortunate. We dodge this head on. And we are just going to keep on flying straight. And notice that this guy is damaged. I don't know how badly... But Spitfires that aren't down will very likely just go back and land. I then notice that his wingtip is missing. But I'm directly on a 6. And I don't want to waste time or let this guy out the beach. So I'm going to be stealing it somewhat. Because I want this I-225 and me to focus completely on these two Spitfires. He can get the last kill. I really don't care. But for now, I just want to win this match. So we turn around here. The two Spitfires are both occupied. And the guy on the left, keep in mind, he still only has one wingtip. I-225 is going for the Spitfire in front of him. And he has a Spitfire on his 6. Now he breaks off from the shot. And he's giving me a little bit of an angle. I'm going to go for this one first because he's a much easier target. I then turn around and try and help the I-225 with the guy on his 6. So we are going to be running him down. And at this point it's a matter of can the I-225 stay alive long enough 
for me to clean them up. Now, luckily, the I-225 here is actually defensively not uh, doing a bad job. He's staying alive. He's staying in, well, kind of in front of him, but it's also a Spitfire. But he stays alive long enough and then leads him properly so that I can gun him down. And just as promised, even though it was for strategy, I stole one of his kills. So I'm going to give him one back in return. We're coming in with a decent amount of speed. The F2G is climbing. I see an easy target. I take it because the F2G is just you but better. So you want to get those things out of the match on unequal terms. You don't want to fight those things fairly because more likely than not you are going to be losing. I just want to make sure that the F2G that I crit is actually going to be dying because that damage model is an absolute joke. I see another F2G coming in from the front. He builds out for us luckily. He notices that it's not a, a salvageable place to be in. He builds out. And we switch to the second F2G. And the F2G here, this might look like I have I'm having a very big energy advantage. That's unfortunately not the case. I'm going 600. He's going at least 550 there. 500. And he has a much better climb rate than us. So if I do this kind of thing, I am going to die. Luckily, I see that my teammate is coming in. And I want to get this F2G as slow as humanly possible. I'm going to use my flaps. I now need to go down to get away from the Spitfire. But my teammate comes in. And he kills him at the perfect opportunity. So down goes the Spitfire. Or the F2G. Spitfire is now diving on us. And the Spitfire is getting kind of close. But he's far enough. And he's kind of fast. So I'm just going to gun this MB5 down. To make this a 2v1. And I'm going to go pure defensive flying here. I'm not busy with trying to reverse this guy. I'm just trying to rope this guy along as long as I can. And rope him into a dogfight. Because if he sticks with me here. He's going to lose all of his energy. He's going to use his entire advantage. And I have two teammates right above him. That I will make his life an absolute hell. I'm on his 6. And I'm just going to raid fight him. I'm just going to turn after him. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to be as passive as possible. While staying on his 6. To make sure that he's going to have the hardest time possible. To shoot me down. And if he ever switches his target. I kill him. And if he doesn't. Then I will keep him busy long enough. So that my teammate can do this. Down he goes. Thank you Mikas Lana. Always nice to have a teammate with a working brain in your team. A few games before that actually. We have a Kia to 4 on a 6. He's going extremely fast and I'm really not feeling this fight. But I'm kind of forced to take it because he is going to be catching us in the long run. So we go up and over. We're going to try to lose as much speed as possible. But he's doing the same thing. He's now busy going for someone else. I'm forced to go for this A6M. Giving all the position that I gained on the Kia 84 back to him and he now gets dead on our six and we are too slow to do anything so i drop my trottle to see if i can reverse him but he's going slower than us so i'm now forced to web back up because if i try to reverse the key before that's slower than me i'm just gonna die so i'm gonna be rolling around in front of this dude for as much as i can see if i can stay alive there's a teammate around here and he needs to help me out right now because if i don't this guy's just gonna eat my ass and yes i know to some of you that sounds appealing to me it really doesn't but he gets shot at by the p47m he is completely just obsessed with shooting me instead of dodging the guy that's killing him for now i'm just going to be flying away and i want you to take a very close look on the left of your screen see a 190 and there he goes straight into the ground good job man you did it and if you know then you know k84 bills out and we are going to go back to the middle of the map Head on the key 61 here. We are a little bit damaged. I'm just using my 20 mils. I don't want to scare him. But he's actually scared. So I'm just going to use all my guns again. Just like the first time. I'm just going to hold the trigger down. And down he goes. P38 coming in. J2M behind us. But luckily he is camping the airfield. Because that's what everyone does these days. And then there is also another key 61. Somewhere that's going to be running us down. But he's not very close. As of just yet. So we're going to see what's going to end up happening here. P38 is going for us. He actually wants to take the fight. So I want to make sure that I have enough energy to do so. P38 Chinese is probably going to be the L variant. Which I have to be somewhat careful of. Because he doesn't actually compress that much. So I'm going to try to lead his turn. It is a P38L. I'm going to roll over his guns. Use the terrain to pitch up into him. And the second he breaks off. He is not really looking at what I'm doing. Big mistake. And down he goes. And right now. Low-ish on fuel. And uh, damaged. And I just want to go RTB. But then I realized. Well I'll just fight this guy first. And this is what I mean with. What am I supposed to do. Just fight the guy on my 6. Yes you should. The key 61 on my 6 will win this fight. 
But I'm not going to let the AA win the fight for me. So I'm going to turn around and see if I can head on him before I actually go back to base. He's coming head on with us. He is behind that little base marker, which is kind of annoying. Just going to use the 20 mils without the tracers. He's not going to be dodging. This time I shoot all my guns and I just blow him out of the air. That's going to be kill number 5. We RTB, we land. And that's going to be basically game other than the J2M that then camps the base for about 8 more minutes. And we lose on tickets. But that's all for today. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.